What's going on guys, Ben from JK Gear and Gadgets and welcome back to another episode of the JK One Ton Swap video series. Now in this episode we are checking out and talking about steering for the Ford Super Duty Dana 60. Sadly we can't just go grab an off the shelf JK kit and make it work on this axle. This axle is a lot wider and a lot of the specs are completely different from the JK. So there's a few options, actually there's only a handful of options of steering kits on the market for this Super Duty axle. I went with the Barnes four-wheel drive high steer weld on arms for a few reasons. They're extremely strong. We're going to have an extremely high mounting place for our drag link and tie rod. And it is, it's really beefy. We are going to weld it on and include a humongous one inch bolt that also bolts it in. So it's welded and bolted on. This thing is not going anywhere. Let's grab the camera, check it out. And like I said, there's really not many. There's probably only four or five different ways to do this and the Barnes is by far the cheapest. $115 for both steering arms. Let's take a look at it. As you can tell, passenger side high steer arm is welded on and it looks amazing. It's really cool because it welds all the way on the in outside, the inside. We weld this little riser plate to the knuckle and we have the huge one inch bolt. So this is what the kit comes with uh, once you get it in the mail. Two pieces, $115, not bad at all. I mean, crap. If you went ahead and bought two one-inch grade eight bolts, that's like that's like 30 bucks right there. So this kit is extremely affordable and it turns out really cool. So let's talk a little bit about the steering on the Dana 60 from a Super Duty going into a JK. The reason we really want to have high steer arms for a few reasons is because it's going to raise our tie rod and drag link up about three inches. If we went ahead and just drilled out the uh, knuckles and put a tie rod on there with heim joints, it's going to be pretty low hanging. And we're also going to have to put a lot of bends in the tie rod because we would hit our track bar bracket or our diff cover once that, whenever we go to a aftermarket diff cover. Since we're doing high steer arms, it's going to move our tie rod out once again, probably like three inches. So we're gonna have no issues clearing that diff. It's also gonna raise it up. Our drag link is gonna be a lot happier with our track bar. The angles are gonna be a lot better. Plus the fact that if you just drill a hole through your tie rod or drill a hole through your knuckle and mount your tie rod and drag link there, your steering radius is gonna be limited by the JK gearbox. The great thing about the Super Duty axle is that it has a lot more steering radius than the uh, stock you know, JK axles. So by putting two holes in here that are offset, our drag link is gonna mount here, our tie rod is gonna be mount here. Stick with me for a second. Uh, it's really not, it's kind of hard to explain, but it's pretty easy to visualize. Imagine this as a door swinging open and shut. This is the pivot point. If we push the door open from the middle, we're gonna have to have less throw than pushing it from up here. So having the drag link in front of the tie rod if we move our drag link, let's say six inches, our tie rod is gonna move seven. So we're gonna get full steering radius out of this Super Duty knuckle. So that's awesome about, you know, instead of just mounting a tie rod and drag link here on the knuckle. Let's talk about why I went with the Barnes kit. First off, $115 is the cheapest you will find a weld on high steer. Artec makes one, Jesse Haynes uh, makes a kit, and both of those are like 200 something bucks. So. Barnes, once again, knocked it out with the free shipping, $115. You cannot beat that. It doesn't come with any of the high joints or bolts, uh, only this one inch. Uh, but, you know, you can't blame them for that. But I'd go ahead and order Heim joints and steering, but that will be next video. This one, we are just simply going to show you how to weld this kit and turn it into this. So this one's done. Let's start this knuckle. First step, all we're gonna do is really clean up our knuckle. Uh, I went ahead and sandblasted the knuckle and put a layer of steel it on there. If you don't have a sandblaster, you can hit this with a wire wheel. It's gonna take you a while, but you really wanna clean up all the surfaces of this knuckle. Since we already have it off, we're gonna do a lot of welding to it, make sure it's extremely clean. Second, it's time to drill this out to one inch. So I went ahead and went on Amazon and I was looking for a one inch drill bit and they were all pretty pricey. And then I stumbled across this kit. I'll throw this kit in the video description. I really recommend it because it starts all the way at 9 16 and goes up to one inch. Granted, these drill bits are not the best. I'm thinking I'm only gonna get two or three uses out of them before they're completely dull, but I got this whole kit for like 25 bucks. Um, you know, we can't just simply grab a one inch drill bit and drill it through. We're gonna have to work our way up and drill this out, you know, getting bigger and bigger each time. So if you're looking for, you know, drill bits that are all, you know, like 25 bucks, 
they're pretty much throwaway bits. I'd recommend getting these, drilling them out, both your knuckles, and then just tossing them in the trash. But this is a lot cheaper. It's actually cheaper to get the full kit than a single one inch drill bit. Don't ask me why, I have no idea, but this will be in the video description. So I'm gonna go put this back on the axle and we are gonna drill this out to one inch. The last one, the big mumbo jumbo. Now that we finally drilled this out to an inch, that took a long time. Luckily on the camera, you probably only saw about 10 seconds of it, but <laughs> it is time to get this bracket pieced together and onto the knuckle. As you see, it's three pieces. It very simply just keys right together. We're gonna key it all up, set it down right there. What I had to do uh, was run the bolt through this bracket a few times uh, with my impact. This bolt head is an inch and a half, uh, so grab an inch and a half socket, run it through a few times, otherwise it kind of sticks. I just kind of had to, you know, it kind of took some of that uh, the zinc coating off, but it's good now. We're gonna slide it through. See, it's a tight fit, but we'll get it in there. We're gonna throw this sleeve over here and we're gonna position it on the knuckle. Now, I'll show you where a little clearance point issue is that we're gonna have to grind down on the knuckle. Right here, there's a little like bubble on the knuckle. We're gonna have to grind that down flush and smooth and then retest fit it so this sits all the way down even. Now that we have the knuckle smooth, we'll go ahead and test fit it again. Move it around, see how we like it. I'm gonna grind away a little bit right here, just so it sits a little more flush. All right, looks pretty good right there. No more trimmings really needed. We're gonna bust out the welder and put some tack welds in place before we fully weld this together. Now that we have it tacked in place, I got it tacked here, 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 down here, and up there. The first place we're gonna start welding is this little sleeve down here. We're gonna weld the whole bottom side, then move up to up here, then weld this side plate over here to the knuckle, weld the inside of here, weld the top underneath side, and then the top. Since this is a type of cast steel, like I did in my other video, we are gonna do the whole pre and post heat treatment it's really not as big of a deal on this because it's a lot thinner cast. Um, the temperature kind of stays constant with this uh, this quarter inch steel, but we are gonna do the same thing. Definitely preheat it up nice and hot, make the welds, and then slowly bring it down on temp. So I'm not gonna record each part of the welding process. Like I said, we're starting at the bottom, working our way up, preheating it, and then post-heating it. Weld this in nice and strong. But as you can tell just now with the tacks and this bolt just kind of sitting there, it's looking good. Everything looks in place. As long as you trim the cast down here, you really can't mess it up too bad. So let's weld this up. All done, let's throw it back on the axle. We're done, that's it. As you can tell, it's not that hard and the outcome is awesome. For $115, you really can't beat it. I mean, you do have to weld a lot. Uh, you do have to drill them, but honestly, I mean, I just knocked this out probably two, two or three hours. Uh, it's really not bad. The 
welding to the cast isn't as bad on these knuckles as it is the center diff. As long as you really preheat it, the post heat um, isn't really as important on these knuckles, but go ahead and blast it with heat after you weld it and slowly bring down the temp, but it's you don't have to be as you know strict about it as you do on the cast center section just because it's not as thick. But these things look amazing and I'm excited for the next step where we'll actually go and weld up our steering. Uh, separating that into two videos because that within itself is gonna be pretty long too. But now that we have these welded on, I can go to Home Depot, we can get some PVC pipe, we can mock it up, order our steering kit, get some DOM tubing, some Heim joints, all that good stuff. That'll be another video. So. If you have any questions about this steering kit, let me know in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. It really gives us a lot of clearance for our tie rod, our drag links mount up nice and high. And overall, I think it's gonna be a really strong kit. Even if for some reason, one of our welds fail, you know, we hit something really big and the weld cracks, we have this massive one inch bolt holding it to the knuckle. So it might flop around a bit, but it's not going anywhere leading to a full failure. Uh, one thing I will mention is once the welds cool down nice, uh, you know, everything's nice and cool, go ahead and uh, torque this bolt down. You don't have to get it crazy tight, but uh, definitely snug it up. And it has a, uh, it's a little nylock nut, uh, so that's not backing off, but it's done. Looking really good. I still have to go paint this side, but I'm very satisfied with the outcome. Everything turned out really nice. The welds, I'm happy with the welds. Up here, I did do two passes, did like a little root pass, and then came over um, and made the final pass. But it's looking great, and we are one step closer to getting our axle under the Jeep. Still a lot more to go. Thanks for watching, guys. Like always, give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for more videos. Peace.